Welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Laurent Bukabza. And guess what? You can already listen to all three movements of the Schumann fantasy that I'm going to perform for you today. How to do this? Just become a member. Click on the link above. You cannot become a member? That's perfectly fine. Click on the red button right here and like that you all know about all the next videos. Now let's listen to this first movement.
What an amazing contrast between the beginning and the end. Now let's put this fantasy into context. This fantasy was written in 1835-1836. Schumann was born in 1810. This piece was dedicated to Franz Liszt, who in return dedicated his sonata in B minor. When Schumann received the sonata from Liszt, he says he doesn't understand it. <laughs> to me, the Liszt sonata is a fantasy, and the fantasy from Schumann is a sonata. And I found interesting that they actually dedicated this piece to each other. Regardless, Schumann, who is then 25 years old, is falling in love with that beautiful 16-year-old Clara Wieck. And he just asked his father for the hands of Clara. The father, with a resounding no, shattered the heart of Schumann. One thing you need to know. After he composed this piece, he gave it to Clara and says, let's play it every day at 11 a.m. on the dot, like that our heart and our soul being unison. Isn't it super romantic? Schumann thought, what else can I do than writing a piece to scream my love for Clara? And that's why we start with that amazing chord. dominant ninth chord. So the dominant means that there's the fifth degree. Since that's a G at the base, that means we're in C. What's very unusual in this piece, for more than 28 measure, we'll never have one C major chord. It's always on the dominant, and that dominant is using a dominant ninth. That's to show the tension, because that chord needs to resolve to that is not going to give it to us. He's going to build up, build up, build up, build up. We have that descending scale. These five descending notes are known as Clara's theme. And we find that in the first sonata from Schumann Opus 14, that starts like this. In F minor, and you recognize the five notes and the dotted rhythm as we are here and then later on so we always stay in the dominant even when we have at measure 17 that C sharp we have that climatic moment at 24 then we go to different key. E flat major, but E flat major to G major doesn't really make sense. Because in fact, E flat major is the relative of C minor. Not only is it going to put us on a G9 that creates all the tension, but on top of this, it's going to put us to an E flat that's going to lead us to a C minor. I love this woman so much and he's so desperate that he's trying to write his desperation in every way possible. This first movement is in a sonata form, but it's a loose and only tortured version of a sonata form because it's romantic period. Regardless, you don't know where the sonata form, just click above again on the link and I explain to you in detail what is a sonata form. All these 40 measures to announce actually the second theme that's gonna somewhat sound similar to the five notes I mentioned, which is at 41. Two things in here to mention. The first one is that descending five notes. So again, Clara's theme, but also that note at 44, as you can see on the picture, are not slashed. Therefore, they should be on the beat. So we cannot do that. That would be a mistake. So there are several ways of doing it. You can do as fast as you want to. With one note at the right and with one note at the left. And therefore, the whole note, and that's the point, 
will be played a little after where it's written. The note in here, I'm going to start 45, is slashed. So because it's slashed, then it's before the beat. And in this case, we don't want to do that. That would be a mistake too. So when it's slashed, it's before the beat. When it's not slashed, it's on the beat and then the main note will come after. That second thing will develop to that moment calmer. Notice that we're still at measure 61 and we haven't had yet a C major. And we can see that everything is with question mark, question mark, what's gonna happen? Here, two voices. The thing not to do. That would be false. I hear that. Which is not one melody line. It's so we have a chromaticism and a note that's in suspension. I want to bring your attention to all these retardando. Retardando means slowing down. These retardando that don't go to an, a tempo. So here it means slow down a little bit, but don't stop the flow. If I'm at 71, I slow down, I slow down, then tempo, tempo, E flat by itself, slow down, which is interesting, slow down on the note that you hold, wait, now adagio, so much slower, I'm beating with my right hand, the beat, slow down, slow down, and still adagio, with formatas, Take off the left hand, so we need to hear this, and then the F by itself. We format the left hand, format the right hand. You can see that on the music I'm showing you. And then an in tempo that's from the beginning. If the lion wakes up, you know, he has been worried of everything, it seems to have been calming down, and he's waking up, and the same vehement behavior comes back. I'm going to show you 94, 95, and 96. Listen how the chords sound. It's sure, it's not written this way, but it's really close. To go back to the beginning, but this time... with a less anxious. Section, we have a moment that's going to come back very often. This. The first time we have. And then we have many variations of this. Because remember, Schumann is the king of repetition. But when he repeats, it's always a little bit different for us not to notice that repetition. And we have in level half tempo, a little bit faster than tempo. Trust, kind of Beethovenish to some extent. To arrive to a climax at measure 113, that's gonna end up something even more tragic and amazing, but all this A flat and what supported in G. Yes, the first time we have a C with 119 measure without a C and finally. The first time with all the 16s, the pattern we have at the beginning could be in chord or but here it's on the C. And after doing the pattern, he's going to do the chord. We have a sense of victory and then. Obviously, because that's a suspension on the formata. 
And now we're gonna go in legenden terms. It means in a tone of a legend, as if I was telling you a story, a legend. In G minor, we're still at in C. Not for long. first 128 measures, I'm telling you it's everything that's in my heart and how I suffer. But now I'm telling the story of the guy who suffered. I'm at measure 154, 155 and 156. Listen to this chord progression. It's actually what Messiaen will use later as limited transposition mode at that time. And we have the same thing on the third bat from Chopin that I presented. As if I take the bottom note, and if I take the top note, this is called a diminished seventh score. What is it? It's when we pile up minor third. A minor third is one and a half step. We put a minor third on top, a minor third on top, a minor third on top. But when you take this seventh diminished chord, and you add the half step before the main note, so B, and you continue. That is from Messiaen. In fact, Messiaen will use as a system. Here it's just a half step of a diminished seventh. The jazz people called it a double diminished. In Romantic period, we're already announcing jazz music and Messiaen. We're at measure 195 now and something like a rush, like the story is precipitating into some type of an abyss. We have a dynamic at 204, it's very interesting, it's three Fs. Very unusual that Schumann uses three Fs. It's a very, very loud dynamic. Beethoven never used a three F. <laughs> Zendo. So some similarities with Beethoven accents, but not as much. Then we arrive to that. So very close to what we had at the very beginning, that tension, that moment of desperation. You see, we isolate that A flat in C minor. feel like an ending at all. It feels like business is unfinished. That brings us back to the recapitulation, but in a very fast way. He skips 28 measures of the exposition. Everything's transposed. And we arrive with that section. We have three different bases that happens for the same element at the left hand and same element on the right hand. And here, for the first time, we have a D. At 292, there's a long retardando up to the adagio. So let me show that to you, 291. peaceful and calm, like somebody saying, don't worry, she will belong to you, she will be your wife, don't worry. And then, we could almost put words on it, but is it really going to be true? And he says, of course it's going to be, don't worry. for him. Two people dialoguing with each other, one saying, don't worry, everything is going to be fine, and the other saying, but what if he doesn't? These two characters, it's him. As we know, Schumann will have trouble with his personality and will have two very different characters, Eusebius and Florestan. 
Or not yet, as you see this large town in this piece, it's more question mark to himself and an answer as his figurative father was helping him saying, don't worry, everything's gonna be fine. I hope you enjoyed this video. Now join and just become a member and then you can listen to all three movements. If you cannot become a member, no problem. Just subscribe to my channel, please don't forget, and share it all around you. You can of course follow me on all social media, Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, or on my website that shows underneath, laurentbookupza.net. I also teach piano lesson. If you're interested, contact me at the email shows below, laurent.bookupza.pianist at gmail.com. I'll see you all next week for the second movement of this Fantasy in C major, Opus 17 by Schumann. Thank you very much. Bye-bye now.